Hello friends and welcome to episode number 11 of My Journey with Jesus. <clears throat> My name is Dave Little and it is an honor and a privilege to be with you here tonight. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all who have been watching and those of you who have left comments either here in YouTube or in your interactions with me out in the rest of society. Uh, it is a privilege that you have been watching. <clears throat> We've been talking about prayer for the past several weeks, and today's topic is going to specifically center on Thanksgiving and the role that Thanksgiving plays in our prayer life. And as you will recall from episode 5 back a few weeks ago, we began a discussion of what I call the ACTS model of prayer, A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And we've gone through adoration and confession in the past couple of weeks, and tonight we're going to focus on thanksgiving and how an attitude of thanksgiving should be the predominant approach to all of our prayers. <clears throat> Thanksgiving is recognizing all of the wonderful things that God has done for us. Jesus modeled that for us in the Lord's Prayer. And it is healthy on a daily basis for us to express our thankfulness to God for the great and many wonderful things that he has done for us and provided for us. Sometimes it's hard to be thankful like maybe in the middle of a pandemic. I know that this day and age we are suffering a lot of isolation. Uh, some, of, some of us have been affected by illness, either personally or in our families, or by the economic impact of this pandemic. As jobs have been on the line, people's businesses have been on the line, family members are suffering, and in the middle of episodes like this, it can be tough to be thankful. But Thanksgiving is a vital component of our prayer life. We have set the tone for prayer time with praise and with confession. <clears throat> and before we start bringing our, our requests before God, we need to acknowledge God's goodness to us and set our hearts in the right mindset for prayer. <clears throat> that can be tough to find the balance between our thankfulness and our requests, expressing our gratitude and expressing our needs. God wants to hear from us. God wants us to bring our needs to him. And he welcomes our, our requests, but we need to keep a balance between what we ask for and acknowledging what we are thankful for. It's good for you spiritually to do that. It's also a challenge to find a balance in my experience between, uh, between focusing on our daily circumstances and focusing on broader spiritual truths. Um, <clears throat> and that's true both of thankfulness and of supplication or, or as we ask for things, as we present our request to God. Um, so many times in a, in a prayer group, we can spend countless amounts of time focused on circumstances. Uh, you know, I've got this situation on my job that is, uh, you know, less than, less than optimal. Um, you know, I've got a sick relative. I've got money problems. I've got, um, you know, issues around... My car needs fixed, whatever, whatever the circumstances are. Uh, and the same thing is true of thankfulness. You know, it's easy to say, well, thank you for a good meal. Thank you for, you know, the refrigerator was on the fritz this weekend and we managed to get that fixed without having to uh, replace it when we couldn't find a, a repairman to come to the house. And, and circumstances like that can really dominate the focus of our prayer if we let them. <clears throat> our health, our provisions, our immediate needs can become the focus 
um, of our of our lives. But a well balanced prayer life and a well balanced spiritual walk will incorporate both our daily situation and the bigger spiritual picture as we walk with Jesus in our daily life and throughout eternity. Keep the eternal perspective in mind. Okay, three ways, tonight's, uh, tonight's main point, three ways to promote thankfulness in our prayer time. Above and beyond circumstances. The first thing that I would recommend, pray your life verses. Uh, we've all got life verses. Those of us who have been walking with God for a while have different passages from the Bible that mean different things to us. And I've had a number of different verses that have been very meaningful to me in different parts of my life. Probably the core life verse that I have adopted is from Matthew 6. This was important, especially as a medical student, but has carried with me through through life. Do not worry, <clears throat> excuse me, do not worry then saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? Or when will we study? That was always my, my uh, ad lib in, uh, in the medical school days. For the Gentiles, the, you know, the, the people who do not know God eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of his own. What a great prayer. Thank you, God, that you know what I need, when I need it, before I need it. Uh, how much more thankful can we be than, than to know that we have a God who knows our every need and eagerly wants to meet our needs, as it says in Matthew 6. Another life verse that I adopted, this one came along later when I was in residency training, 2 Corinthians 4. We do not lose heart, therefore, but though our outer man is decaying, our inner man is being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary afflictions are producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. The light and momentary afflictions was a concept that I took through me, took, took with me through Lots and lots of very trying times as a physician in training. Uh, you can picture it. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's 11 o'clock at night. You've been working all day. You're exhausted. Suddenly you realize you've got eight hours left to work before 7 a.m. When, when the help comes back. And you're getting pounded by telephone calls and admissions from the emergency department and sick patients in the uh, critical care unit and, and you're all over the place and it just feels like there's no way that I can withstand another eight hours of this level of intensity. God speaks. These are light and momentary afflictions and they're producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. <clears throat> so these are the types of thoughts that as we incorporate the Word of God into our daily lives, we cannot help but respond with thankfulness. Another way to pray is to reflect on the promises of God. And the Word of God is full of promises uh, by the dozens. We could do a whole series on the promises of God alone. Um, I picked out a few of these from some of my own readings this week. I Looked to a pastor I enjoy listening to, Pastor Colin Smith from Chicago, I believe, unlockingthebible.org. Uh, and here are a couple of the promises that uh, Pastor Colin cites to inspire thankfulness. In the Lord, your labor is not in vain. God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. In Christ, we have an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. What, uh, what wonderful promises and what wonderful causes for thanksgiving from the spiritual perspective. Uh, certainly, I can be thankful that the fridge didn't break down this weekend. 
at the same time, how much more thankful should I be that the day will come when God will wipe away every tear from my eyes. And in Christ, I have an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Unlike food that gets left in the refrigerator after the refrigerator dies. That food can perish and spoil and fade. I didn't even make that connection until just now. Uh, but that's kind of a cool uh, message to me after, uh, after this weekend. <clears throat> and the final thought. Uh, method number three. Uh, keep a prayer journal. I don't know how many of you keep uh, prayer journals. It has been helpful to me. Uh, throughout much of my life experience. And we could probably do a whole other uh, session on just the value of a prayer journal and, you know, some of the downfalls of keeping a prayer journal. But the usefulness of a prayer journal can enable us to have a place to reflect on our daily circumstances and, and write stuff down. Today I prayed that the refrigerator wouldn't die on us in the middle of the pandemic. Today I prayed that um, my car wouldn't break down. Um, you know, about a half an hour or about a half an hour before I started this this uh, gig, this this video, I couldn't find my phone, and I was worried that I lost my phone, which would be a catastrophe because I am working from home and I need my phone to give me the codes that I need to sign into my computer at work so that I can work from home. So it would be more than just a mild inconvenience if I were to lose my phone. Um, and sure enough, I found my phone and God was, was looking after me. So you can, you can use your prayer journal to reflect on those daily circumstances. Um, the other thing you can use your prayer journal for is to review previous answers to prayer. If you keep a prayer journal, you can look back a week or a month or, or three months or six months and see the many times that you had things happening in your life, whether it be daily circumstances or deeper spiritual issues that you took to God in prayer and God was faithful to answer those prayers. Three months from now, it will be, you know, the 4th of July or coming up on it. And I may have forgotten all about the fact that uh, the refrigerator almost died in the middle of the pandemic. But if I've got that written in my prayer journal, that'll give me something to be thankful for and something to just call to mind that God answers prayer and that we have more things to be thankful for than we can possibly ever commit to our own fallible memories. Okay, we are at uh, 13 minutes. Those are the, the, the three ways that... I have uh, devised to promote thankfulness in prayer. Pray your life verses, reflect on the promises of God, keep your prayer journal, and, and use that to track your, your daily circumstances and your, and your answers to prayer. And with that, I will say thank you for listening. Always a, a joy and a privilege to have some time together to give my reflections on my walk with Jesus and hopefully uh, stimulate some, some ideas and some thoughts for, for your experiences as well. I am <clears throat> just as messed up as anybody else is out there, but God has laid it on my heart to use my YouTube channel on Monday afternoons to put out my experiences in my walk with him. And I, Deeply appreciate those of you who listen in on a regular or even an occasional basis. Feel free to leave your questions in the discussion section below this video. Any comments that you might have. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. And as I've said before, like liking this video doesn't really do anything to, to, to stroke my ego. I put the word out there and as God tells us, his word does not when it goes out it does not come back empty in the lord your labor is not in vain as we saw tonight but when you do hit that like button it uh, sends a message to youtube and the more likes a video gets the more likely it is to turn up on other people's searches as they are searching for inspiration through the contents on youtube if you want to see more of these videos you can hit the subscribe button and you will get a little notification whenever 
the channel comes on or whenever a video is uploaded. And with that, God bless you all, and we'll see you next week.